Okay, so uh, we'll answer Abhishek's question. He says, um, can you elaborate Matthew 5, according to Jesus, if any person call the other person fool and the consequences would be hellfire? Okay, so Abhishek, the way we understand this uh, uh, passage, uh, it's it's like, it's not just about the rule, okay? It's not that, you know, if, if uh, somebody uh, calls another person a fool, that they, they would be put into uh, the fire of hell. While Jesus is saying that, the point that he's making is uh, that, you know, the God's standards are higher. Uh, and at that uh, time, we must remember, he uh, had the Pharisees uh, as part of his audience. And uh, we know that the Pharisees had double standards. You know, they would, they would preach something, but they would live out something completely different. So you know, he was trying to let them know that their thoughts, their... Um, you know, their, their uh, motives and their actions uh, must have the integrity, right, that, that God desires, that you can't uh, be one person to the world and expect uh, God to accept you, right, uh, for, for the show that you, you put out. So in that context, you know, Jesus made these statements. Now, this is not literally to say that, you know, if you call some another person a fool, then the exact consequence that follows is hellfire. But uh, what Jesus is saying is there is a severe consequence uh, for wrongdoing. Um, and he lists out, you know, dif different kinds of uh, wrongdoing. And he's saying that, God's standards are higher. God's bar is higher. Okay, so that's the point. That's the point. So Abhishek, um, did I answer your question or are you looking for? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, fine, fine. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just continue, and if at all you have any uh, questions, you can you can always, you know, inter interrupt. Okay, so we were talking about childlikeness, and we said that we must have complete dependence on God, and that's the way a, a kingdom person thinks. Um, but also uh, in uh, just tell you that scripture, Matthew chapter eighteen, verse four, Jesus did make a statement and say that. Whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So that's another point. You know, when we are childlike, when we carry that kind of a faith, uh, we are told that in God's perspective, in his kingdom, you are greatest because, you know, that, that's the kind of uh, trust that you carry. Okay. So, an additional point to uh, that section there. Now, moving on, we are encouraged to carry servant humility. Okay, so Jesus, once again, uh, uh, while uh, communicating to his disciples, he makes this point. He says that whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant, and whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So servant humility is a, really a kingdom perspective. And uh, Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 20. Now we might see this concept in a lot of leadership books these days. Uh, and, uh, you know, many leaders who have led people effectively uh, they too might vouch for you know this this kind of a servant humility servant leadership and all that but it's actually a kingdom thing uh, and jesus taught us to uh, move with this value where he says that anybody who wants to be first uh, you actually have have to take on the position of a servant and anyone who wants to lead so you must 
be like a slave or or you must serve the people really well and a true leader is actually a servant and jesus also did that right so greatness in the kingdom of god uh, it actually comes not out of positions that we have not out of the titles that can be given to us but from our humble service it comes from giving ourselves you know to to uh, serving god's purposes serving god's people and doing this well when we do that when we are uh, we are servants in the kingdom of god you know it actually uh, we, we are told that when we are last you know we are actually first but we need a kingdom mindset to to accept that and to live it out because if we don't have a kingdom perspective then it doesn't make sense you know why would you why would you want to lead by serving it's it's very hard uh, but when we carry a kingdom perspective we would be okay to humbly serve others jesus also washed the feet uh, of his disciples uh, and this is the same kingdom perspective that he brings to his followers um, and says that if you want to lead uh, you must be a servant in the kingdom and you are great in the kingdom when you choose to be a servant okay all right so uh, there are, there is a question on the chat but i'll come back to that later uh, here's the next perspective uh, kingdom thinking um, it's about trusting the king for his decision okay and trusting the king's perspective celebrating the king's perspective so the parable that is given here is that of uh, Uh, a landowner who hires laborers he hires some people in the morning uh, and he promises them uh, you know a, a, a remuneration a reward uh, and they get to work uh, and then later on he goes out and at different parts of the day he finds more laborers and he keeps inviting them uh, to come and work uh, in his vineyard uh, but at the end of the day you know he gives all of them the same amount as reward okay now what happens when when he does that i'll just uh, read those pa- those uh, verses for you matthew chapter 20 uh yeah w- from verse 11 and when they had received it they complained against the land owner saying these last men have worked only one hour and you made them equal to us who have borne the burden and the heat of the day but he answered one of them and said friend i am doing you no wrong did you not agree with me for a denarius take what is yours and go your way i wish to give to this last man the same as to you is it not lawful for me to do what i wish with my own things or is your i evil because i am good so the last will be first and the first last for many are called but few are chosen okay so in this case what happens is the laborers who came in early they have a grievance against the land owner and they're saying how could you pay the same amount to somebody who labored for no i'm just saying 12 hours uh, and somebody who labored for 1 hour you get the same pay for both of them uh, it doesn't make sense but the land owner says that i am the owner okay and i am doing this for my reasons now can you not accept that okay so what what we understand here is that you know god has a way of doing things god has a way of uh, uh doing things in the lives of his children sometimes for us right from the outside uh we don't understand what god is doing for example you know you look at a a certain brother or a certain sister in your uh, church who you think is not that spiritual but uh, as you look at their journey you know they they seem to be blessed with more opportunities for ministry they uh, seem to be uh, you know blessed with favor you know from people and uh, um, you know they they come back to you sharing oh god did this god did that and you're 
wondering and i am the one who is praying here for uh, hours together and so and so puts in only whatever uh, so many minutes of time and they are they uh, are receiving such a wonderful reward in their ministry and look at me you know i am struggling so this is our way of thinking now we don't know um, how god looks at at people and what what is there in his perspective right because one thing we know that we serve a good god right he is a just king so obviously he will do nothing which is unjust so when we see how god is functioning uh, we must celebrate his perspective and it, you know it may happen a lot of times it may happen uh, in the ministry because we end up judging people and we we end up saying man how is their ministry doing so well and you know mine is not uh, how come you know there's tremendous growth there and uh, the holy spirit is being poured out there and nothing much is happening here but i know that i am the one doing uh, all these things and god is supposed to bless me right so you know that kind of an attitude where you are not letting god be god and do what he uh, you know he knows best right so he he is uh, obviously doing the right things in his people's lives so celebrating the king's perspective becomes very very important and who are we uh, there, there's another uh, passage in uh, romans 14 where apostle paul he says who are you to judge another servant to his own master he stands or falls indeed he will be made to stand for god is able to make him stand so as a kingdom person okay, here's the flip side we also celebrate right so uh, we've been saying you know it's not about uh, denominations all these are man made things you know based on doctrines based on a certain church culture these are all man made things but the spiritual dimension of the church is that we are one if you are born again uh, if you are saved by by the redeeming work of the lord jesus you belong to the spiritual kingdom of god and when you see things in the kingdom of god let's say another ministry is doing well another uh a uh, brother in christ is uh, serving really well and uh, you know people are being blessed through his work we actually will be celebrating because isn't he part of the same kingdom now god is doing it why is he being so rewarded so much we don't know but one thing we know we are all part of the same kingdom and wonderful you know to see god's kingdom extended god's work being done people being blessed so that's a kingdom perspective right and a kingdom uh, we we will talk about this later a kingdom builder will celebrate what the king is doing right without uh, judging and criticizing and complaining uh, and obviously we don't have all the uh, you know the reasons for why god god is doing a certain things but we trust that he is a just god we trust that he is a good god so celebrating the king's perspective is also very important for us and uh, having that mindset you know as as you live this life is important now coming to the next uh, foundation of kingdom thinking is kingdom resolve okay kingdom resolve <coughs> excuse me okay so in this what do we notice now we are basically saying that god wants to see um a determination for the sake of the kingdom and for the sake of the king now uh, for all of us i'm sure we will relate to uh, the idea of a soldier uh, who has pledged allegiance to his land and uh, he goes on his assignment uh, now maybe there is a certain celebration in his family where where he needs to come back and he has already planned for it but uh, in the case of a war breaking out you know uh, at the border uh, he is told that yes you had applied for leave but unfortunately because of the current circumstances we are not able to send you back right so what will be the attitude of the soldier any good soldier who has made up his mind to serve the country will be fine he'll be like okay i will just convince my family i will let them know that this is the situation and i have to be on assignment right so something like that like a determination and a resolve for the kingdom of god uh, is very very important so uh, jesus in in a, a certain 
uh, you know teaching he he tells uh, uh, this this person that though okay let me just read it in in his own words here okay somebody comes up to jesus and says the lord i will follow you wherever you go this is in luke chapter 9 verse 57 uh yeah so verse 60 jesus okay verse 59 uh this person says then he said to another follow me but he said lord let me first go and bury my father uh then jesus said to him let the dead bury their own dead but you go and preach the kingdom of god and another also said lord i will follow you but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house but jesus said to them no one having put his hand to the plow plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of god okay so what is the point that jesus is making here so is he saying that uh, if you belong to the kingdom of god forget about your family family is not important is that the point that jesus is making no because we know other passages of scripture uh, to be very precise first timothy 5:8 and i think uh, mm, yeah first timothy 5:8 where we are told that a person who does not care for their own family their own flesh and blood is worse than an unbeliever okay so when scripture says that we are supposed to take care of our own family and you all will recall when we did uh, isaiah 58 about the the chosen fast we we said that you know god expects us to to bless uh, our own uh, kith and kin so is god saying is in the passage that we just read did jesus mean that the one who is part of the kingdom should forget about his personal affairs completely about his family about his loved ones you know, like totally shut your mind uh, off of those things and keep serving like a soldier well obviously he didn't uh, pitch one against the other that's not the point uh, but what he is emphasizing is a kind of a resolve and a determination where you put the kingdom first okay uh, like we said earlier seek ye first the kingdom of god so it's an attitude with which we we uh, live and work in the kingdom uh, where we say that if there is anything in my you know in my personal life that is capable of distracting me from the kingdom then you know god i am above it so basically what you're saying is in this case you know jesus says okay let the dead bury their own dead the reason he said that was you know this young person who had um, resolved to follow jesus if he were to go back home uh, to do the funeral and get distracted right uh, and never come back to serve to follow jesus again you know that would be a missed opportunity for the kingdom and probably jesus knew his heart and jesus probably he knew that this person might end up uh, you know getting distracted and that is why he said let the dead bury his own dead meaning you keep the focus no don't 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 um, uh, try to do this and that while you also chase the kingdom keep the focus and make the kingdom your priority similarly you no know, when he addresses the the second issue here when someone wants to go and bid farewell uh, to their household or their family members he probably knew their heart as well uh, and he knew that once the person goes back uh, you know uh, meets with the family members and uh, and the family responsibilities weigh heavy on them you know, they might make a decision and say okay forget about following jesus i will just take care of my family okay so uh, what he is warning us about is replacing the things of this world um uh, you know for the things of the kingdom so the things of the kingdom have to be priority that doesn't mean we are neglecting our daily responsibilities yes responsibilities are there but we learn to live for god in the midst of these responsibilities right uh, and wherever i don't know maybe at some point in our lives the, if if at all there is a certain sacrifice required and we have seen that in the lives of so many missionaries right like you had a uh, david living david livingston who went to uh, south africa is it yeah and you you had different people going to various parts um who, who's the person who came to india here 
Serampur, uh, William Carey, yeah, William Carey, who came uh, down to India, even Ida Scudder, who came down to Vellore, India. So they made huge sacrifices. They they left behind their families. I mean, Ida Scudder, it, it's it said that uh, um, you know she was pretty well to do, but she committed her life to service. Amy Carmichael, she's also from a very uh, wealthy Irish family, if I'm not wrong, but she made a choice. Okay, I'm moving to another part of the world, sacrificing everything for the sake of the gospel, right? So there are some who have made huge, huge uh, shifts in their lives. But this is not to say that, you know, God is saying you can't have that. That's, that's not what God is saying. But the point is prioritizing the kingdom, prioritizing the kingdom. Uh, and if ever, a huge, uh, you know, decision like that is required. I'm sure God will give the grace uh, and, uh, you know, he will grant the favor to make those big decisions as well. So a uh, point is to prioritize the kingdom. Okay, moving on. Uh, when it comes to kingdom thinking, uh, handling rejection, right? So uh, Jesus said this to his disciples, when you go and preach, um, if people don't accept you, Right? You shake the dust off of your feet, right? Uh, and uh, I mean, don't don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. Uh, and then he also said that the kingdom of God is near you. So what is he saying? You know, when we are living for the kingdom, uh, it doesn't mean that everyone is going to welcome us with a red carpet, okay? And we may not be acceptable uh, uh, to a lot of people, uh, in the people that we are, in the standards that we carry, uh, and uh, also the message. Right? Some people may not want to listen to the message from you. You are rejected. Why? You are rejected for the sake of the gospel. Okay, I'm not talking about doing the wrong thing and being rejected. No, that's that's not what I'm talking about. But doing the right thing and doing the right thing for the kingdom and being rejected. <coughs> Excuse me. So what is Jesus saying? He's saying that that could happen. Okay. Uh, and uh, we realize it happened to Jesus. He himself was rejected for the uh, right things. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, but we don't let that rejection get us down okay we rise up and we keep moving forward so um for a kingdom person okay how how does it apply in our everyday uh, life <coughs> maybe you know you're doing something for the kingdom you go to a new city and uh, uh, god has called you to that city and you begin your church planting work right what if you are met with questions and complaints uh, and rejection by the regular people and also the Christians in that city? Now, how would you respond? How would you respond? Um. Yes, Mangi. Two op options. One is to, to try and convince people. And second one is like what Jesus said, just shake the dust off my feet and then go to the next city. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, fine. Sure, Mangi. But uh, yeah, you may want to uh, continue in the same city also. You know, if you are very clear that God has called you to do the work there, so thank you. Thank you for those responses. Uh, but again, the point is that you don't let the rejection become a setback. Right? Because for the kingdom of God, when you are serving him, uh, there will be many such incidents. Uh, but we carry on with the kingdom perspective. You know, we don't take things personally uh, and uh, we keep going forward. I mean, it applies to uh, something as simple as, you know, you, we try to do, uh, we have an initiative that we start uh, as, as ministry to serve people, but it doesn't work out, right? 
and we hear from our family members and our you know other friends in church that hey you should have never done that it didn't work out what is this you keep trying things and they don't work out well we don't let that defeat of failure stop us right we keep carrying on we think okay fine you know this didn't work out but i'm still serving the kingdom i need to do something to bless the kingdom to extend the kingdom what is the new thing that i can do or how can i improve what i um uh, did earlier so a kingdom person is thinking forward is thinking ahead so setbacks rejections uh, failures delays you know these things may bother us a little bit but we are not going to let those things stop us okay we keep moving forward so that again is a kingdom way of thinking so we'll move forward with the next point here about kingdom thinking uh, <clears throat> this has to do with the riches uh, of this world and you know all that the the world has to offer uh, for a comfortable and luxurious life uh, so jesus talking to a rich young man you know he said that it is easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a uh, young person to um enter the kingdom of god okay so what was the point that jesus was making so the point that jesus is making here is that <clears throat> it's not that having riches having wealth um having resources is a wrong thing it's it, it's not like it's a sinful thing but if we are not careful and our heart is given over to these these things that sustain us then it is possible for us to get distracted from the things of the kingdom so he's saying that uh, we must not be uh, completely enticed by the world now another passage where you see jesus making this point is the parable of the sower uh yes that yeah correct parable of the sower you know where he says that you know <clears throat> the weeds uh the weeds rise up they choke the growth of of the of the plant uh, and then in the interpretation he says the things of this world the riches of this world right so they tend to choke the growth of a believer so the wealth of this world can be a distraction uh however if as a believer you know we we have the grace and the blessing of uh, money uh and yet we know how to prioritize the kingdom and live for the kingdom you know that is such a blessing and i'm sure you know many of us uh, are aware of people like this uh, who are in the business who are uh, uh, you know Mm, sought after in the country doing very well but at the same time they are uh, christians who live with high standards okay and and uh, uh, so we know that god is not forbidding us from having resources having money having wealth it's not wrong but if our heart is taken over by these things you know then we might get distracted from the purposes of the kingdom and that's the point he is making so when we are living for the kingdom you know we must also be careful uh, not to let wealth and riches entice us okay the next perspective here about the kingdom is uh, having more than an outward form so basically what jesus is saying is he's saying that uh, you know the pharisees they had they were more concerned about their reputation reputation is what others think about us right uh, and they were not so keen or, or or you know they were not that bothered about what god thought about them so that is why to the people of the kingdom to the people of the kingdom he made a statement uh, in matthew 5:20 where he said for i say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and pharisees you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven so he noticed the so called good works of the pharisees but he told his own disciples that beyond their good works which are primarily for display uh, i want you to have a a life live out a righteous life right in every way in every way and, and that is the true uh, display of the kingdom that is the true uh, 
lifestyle of the kingdom so you know he encourages us to live out the kingdom through and through not just in the right attitudes uh, and the right behavior but also with the right thinking and with the right heart so today we have covered you know different perspectives about the kingdom the kind of thinking that we must have and i'm just quickly going to go over them once again uh, just so you know we have some recall we said that uh, uh, we are part of the kingdom of light we've been brought out of the kingdom of darkness and there's a certain way the kingdom of light functions and a certain thinking and in this thinking we are called to have higher standards for daily living uh, we are asked to walk with faith we are called to uh, live for the sake of the king we are called to have a child like uh, attitude towards the things of the kingdom lead with servant humility celebrate the king's perspective have kingdom resolve handle rejection uh, in the right manner and not just have an outward form of goodness and righteousness but surpass right the the standards of the world's goodness so this is the manner of kingdom thinking uh, you know that we are supposed to carry so along these lines if there are any thoughts or comments you know i would encourage you to uh, please go ahead and uh, put it across maybe we can have a little bit of discussion before we close today even as you're thinking <clears throat> let me take up uh, what kennedy has put on the chat here he says why is it that christians who have tribulation in their daily walks often seem to have greater joy in the lord than those who live in more comfortable spiritual climate is faith related or lack of childlike trust so uh, yeah kennedy i think you've answered your own question the components there are faith childlike trust uh even in difficult circumstances if people can maintain that uh you know they would realize as scripture says right momentary afflictions uh, that are working for us an eternal reward okay so they maintain that kingdom perspective but uh it's possible that sometimes we are so comfortable in our so called spiritual environment we have the right church we have very good resources spiritual resources but we never really uh digest it and choose to live out of it right uh, and thereby we we lack faith or we just carry the wrong attitudes uh, and so uh, all that doesn't work in our lives right so yeah kennedy and that could be the reason okay uh, mangi i saw your hand raised okay thank you pasta um yeah. i had the question and then i, I answer i answered my own question but i asked questions uh anyway um in 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 matthew matthew, matthew 5 verse 20 it says uh unless your righteousness ex uh, exceeds that uh sorry exceeds the righteousness of of scribes and pharisees you will no mean enter the kingdom of heaven and we are given three scriptures here at the at the next part in, in in the next paragraph that state the same thing. So that made me think: Is it possible for anyone to exceed the, the righteousness of uh, scribes and Pharisees? Because it is it is near impossible. Those guys, those people lived by the law. They did everything in the book, even though it was outward. It wasn't uh, inward. It was. They did everything according to the book. Now we live by faith in Christ. But we've got the Holy Spirit in us who enables us to, to do everything right. But is it possible for us to exceed that righteousness? That's the question I had. Thank you, Mom. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mangi. So we know that Christ came to fulfill the law and not to uh, destroy it. And as you have rightly pointed out, now we have the Holy Spirit in us. And also, we have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Okay? Thereby, 
our position from where we start living out this righteous life itself uh, you know it it is way surpassing that of the pharisees uh, and the law keepers of of our uh, uh, day and time so yes the answer is yes uh, mangi because of what jesus has done for us who we have become in christ jesus uh, and the holy spirit working in our hearts we can surpass the righteousness of the pharisees thank you thank you pastor yeah sure and another point is there in the passage itself matthew 5 because if you read the passage jesus is actually attacking them and and he is saying that the display of your right works is okay but what about your heart right so that's what that's what he's saying each time he's saying murder uh you say that you oh you should not murder but from your heart you you are uh, uh, ill treating your own brother right uh, adultery he says okay uh, the law says that do not commit adultery but you are looking at women with lust so he is attacking them and there itself we know that you know their righteousness was not uh, that correct anyway because they were doing one thing but their hearts were so far away from their actions yeah so just another additional point uh, okay uh, thank you for that question i'm coming to rupa rupa you raised your hand ma'am you have shared that point i just wanted to oh share. okay okay fine fine you said that uh, this pharisees were uh, most of the time corrected by christ because they were putting on a righteousness which was not righteousness they were yeah. hypocrites in their following so that god wanted something true and from the heart yes yeah yes thank you rupa thank you for adding uh, that point all right so uh, <clears throat> any more yes uh, sam i can see your hand raised please go ahead sam uh, thank you ma'am um so something that i've been sitting with um since um even from the last classes um um i think what i'm trying to find and i'm i'm still framing my question so i'm i'm sorry if it's not very clear uh, but i i i think um, you know when I, when i hear the word kingdom and and mm. and as we look into kingdom thinking um my first understanding or like natural understanding is towards um some form of governance mm. you know um ruler yes. who rules who decides who dictates uh, who mm. makes decisions mm. um now as per kingdom thinking um and as per the bible clearly it's it's a form of monarchy uh, mm. god mm. can alone be the righteous king yes and and it is you know and and he is the only one who can uh, judge correctly who can uh, dictate correctly and who can decide correctly you know mm. that's mm. part of but um but practically living right now in our world i mean uh, you know we still keep god in our midst and we seek for his guidance and all that but mm. but i'm thinking uh, translating that uh, to our culture to our society the way we function you know we we live in a democratic society mm. um, which is majority wins uh, but then uh, the minority who may have the right voice often gets oppressed by democracy so i see kingdom thinking and democracy uh, sort of not going hand in hand it's it's almost colliding because kingdom thinking is almost autocracy it's 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 monarchy you know uh, so so let's say uh, you know practically um if this was an organization and uh, uh, you know how many we are here and we need to elect leaders uh, we need to make certain decisions um yes we are starting a church and all of that so i'm, I'm just thinking how kingdom thinking applies mm. uh mm. to our function especially in terms of governance mm. uh, where you know uh, to follow i mean to follow uh the, how uh things are in the bible i mean 
back then even even when christ was there it was still a room i mean we were still they were still in not a dem- they were they were not living in a democratic society so i'm thinking a lot of what he preached was it uh, what and what's there in the bible is it to fit uh, the context of uh, Uh, uh you know a uh, um, monarchy rule where you know the king says this and uh, the king so it, it's easy for people to relate mm-hmm. uh, but now 2000 3000 years later you know we don't have kings and queens anymore we have votings and and what not you know, there's no royalty royal family and all that so uh, so i mean so my thoughts are all tangled up uh, in yeah yeah you know, Yeah no it's good uh, Sam like you're just trying to uh, <clears throat> understand what we are talking about and also compare it with uh, our present day uh, governance structure that most countries uh, have uh, so you're right it is a monarchy uh, in the sense that it has god at at the center of the rule but we know he's a triune god um and uh, uh you know when it comes to the principles uh, of the kingdom yes it is set by by god and his nature right it is congruent to the nature of god so uh, god is just and therefore you know the the kingdom uh, the kingdom functions with justice uh, kingdom authority right kingdom authority comes from the king he is the ultimate source and his kingdom rules over all other uh, kingdoms that exist here on the earth uh, so you know kingdom authority flows in that manner uh, it's the highest authority then uh, you know you you talk about uh, values you talk about uh, thinking so ways of thinking that that we looked at today yes it is all set by god uh, and god presents this to us uh, now the problem which i think a lot of us may have is um to worry that it's being imposed on us right like where is the freedom where is the uh, where where is uh, the free will where is the uh, opportunity to have an opinion uh, right and and to live your life to to the best to the fullest Uh, at the end of the day you're being given uh, you're being uh, handed out these these uh, rules and you have to live by those rules well see uh, just because we are ruled by our god who is our king it doesn't mean that we lack freedom in fact you would notice the very reason why this world uh, was infected with sin is because god chose free will uh and he never controlled he never controlled any decision uh that that you know <coughs> mankind made so uh then adam and eve sinned but still you know god had a plan of redemption to bring us back so uh, the point i'm trying to make is yes it is not a democracy that we equate with uh, a free a freedom of expression and freedom of choice uh but you see the kingdom allows incredible freedom okay and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty and that is that is something that uh, uh, we 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 see in the scriptures and the kingdom is described as righteousness peace and joy that's the kingdom of god okay and uh, uh, you know god god wants to see every individual thriving and prospering in fact you know we will be our best in the kingdom when we conform to the rule and dominion of the kingdom of god okay so uh, just because we are part of this this spiritual kingdom of god it doesn't mean that you know we at some point will feel restricted or limited okay uh, and you know i'm reminded of the scripture i think it is in psalm 103 I, i'm not very sure right now but it says that uh, uh, he will take uh, what there will be you will be far from oppression you will be far from op- oppression so you know jesus uh demonstrated the deliverance of god from every oppression when he walked the earth and 1 john 3:8 we we read that you know he destroyed the works of the devil right so that's the king whom we are serving who sets us free from every oppression uh, and our freedom will will abound 
to an extent that we can't express so this kingdom is very different from the kingdoms that we have seen on the earth and the rule and reign of kings and queens that we have seen on the earth uh, which may help us you know which which may cause us to think that oh kingdom some form of restriction here you know where 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 is the freedom and uh, maybe democracy is better and all of that so yeah just additional thoughts uh, sam the way you are trying to right. find your words i think i am also trying to find my words right, right. and thank yeah. you ma'am i think i'll sit on this more but i'm i think yeah. i'm thinking more on uh, like um, I mean, um, following the king is. I mean, it is the best. It is clear and no doubt, you know. Yeah. But I'm yeah. thinking, um, like, um, I mean, it'll it'll sound a little uh, because I'm making this up. It's it's hypothesis. But let's say, you know, um, let's say you know, you and I, uh, we are starting an organization and uh, and we are setting some policies for our like. Let's say this is an and, and uh, let's say we, you and I are somehow on the top. You know, the two yeah. of us are leaders. and uh, we both uh, are praying and seeking um, god's guidance mm. uh, and if i mean i think in the spiritual realm it it would be it 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 it's it's just also clear like god would give us uh, a commandment and we would follow it um, mm. but because we are on earth and and uh, you know you and i supposing i again I, this, i haven't thought it through so well but uh, let's say the two of us have two different um, say sense of direction you know you want to lead the team in a different way and i want to lead the team in a different way and we both are we have the best intentions we both uh, are we both somehow convinced convicted that you know this is yeah so uh some not able to hear you anymore sorry can can you hear me uh, yeah could 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 hear you yeah yeah you can you can uh, yeah finish yes sam sorry. please go ahead so let's say you and me as leaders we get uh-huh. two different sense of directions you know uh so that i'm thinking it would the result in a conflict mm. uh, because we don't have a i mean we have king but because we are, we have our limitations of being uh, in 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 our physical form or not i mean the chances are that we you and i we have the both uh, we get the both sense of direction and and we we are united and mean but there's also a slim chance that you know Uh, and i i'm thinking of most of the churches that have split uh the divisions that have been causes where you know two leaders you know both uh having the best intentions uh can't see eye to eye uh and then they split so it's it's a little opposite of kingdom thing like you know it's and uh, i mean with the king being present on earth i mean i'm i'm sure i'm thinking of the millennial reign and when we are in heaven it would be so simplified but in in today's world looking at all of these churches splitting the leaders not being able to see eye to eye uh different policies so so I'm, but I, i'm still yet to frame my question but uh, some some of the things that i'm wrestling with right now mm-hmm. yeah good uh, sam so i mean you could just ponder on these things uh and in both the courses uh but actually more in in this particular course you know we will talk about uh kingdom uh the kingdom of god and you know conflicts among god's people and all that so we we will come to these things later as well and look at it in depth looking forward to ma'am thank yeah, you thank sure. you so much thank you thanks okay uh, we'll uh, just have charles and mangi also ask their questions we may exceed by a few minutes today's class but i hope that's okay with all of us uh, charles please go ahead you you had something to say yeah, thank you so much ma'am uh, for allowing me um i'm looking at uh when we we say that uh, the, there is no freedom mm. it, it's all again coming to the main point of this topic that we are doing today kingdom thinking thinking our thought landscape most of the humans their thought landscape has been veiled in a way that um we think that we are under oppression we are slaves 
you don't have a right to, to, to say anything, but in the real sense, the moment there is that shift, that paradigm shift, that ability to know that uh, we are not under operation, but we are under freedom, the thinking must change. And I bless the Lord that I am in this class, that I'm able to learn about this type of thinking. Because outside there, people are thinking of celebrity. You remember of a certain lady, I don't remember well who she was, who said that Christianity is slavery, that is prison. But that was her thought. But to me, I am saying that when our thinking changes, uh, we are going to have a, a, another perspective on how to think about the kingdom we are serving in. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Yes, definitely, you know, God will, uh, we will uh, imbibe these things and it will affect our lives in a positive way. Uh, yes, uh, Mangi, please go ahead. You had something to say. Thank you, Pastor. Um, just adding, adding on on uh, on Samuel's question and what what mm. Charles just uh, spoke mm. now. Uh, if 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 we look at at at, at John three verse fourteen to sixteen mm. uh, to seventeen actually, uh, we see that it is by us exercising our own freedom that we we follow Christ. It's like whosoever believe. So it's 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 whosoever choose to believe. We have the freedom to to choose to to live into the in, in the kingdom of, of of Christ. To live to choose to to give our own freedom to God to submit under God so that His dominion may be. Uh, we can live under His His His, his, uh, his dominion. So it is like like uh, the question someone asked. One thing, I, one thing I'll say is that we, it is as believers we choose, and being in the kingdom of God, it's not by mandatory, it's not slavery, but it mm. is the person choosing to submit to God. Say, okay, God, I'm giving myself to you. I'm giving myself uh, to your authority. Come and be the Lord in my life. Come be the King in my life. So it's actually freedom at the highest level it's like yes knowing that true. you are free and then submitting that freedom to god mm, thank you mom mm, mm. thanks thanks mangi yeah that's uh that's true uh and uh i know when the term kingdom comes uh for a lot of us including myself i feel restricted i feel limited that oh man now you have to conform to everything uh you know which which is set by this kingdom but as mangi said uh, this is the highest uh, form of freedom uh, that you and i will ever have to be part of the kingdom because as we live by kingdom thinking what we're actually receiving is eternal rewards okay it might be a uh, uh, momentary discomfort you know temporal discomfort but uh, at the end of the day god is setting us up for for blessings he's setting us up for eternal rewards uh, and uh, you know he's a righteous king he's a just king and he knows how to lead us uh, into victory so uh, it's it's a win win situation all the way uh, and, and yeah please think along uh, and i'm so happy that you know we are we are trying to digest uh, this perspective so that we can live it out okay so that's wonderful please keep thinking please keep coming up with questions uh, and, and we will learn more uh, on the same subject as we move forward so for now we we are wrapping up here and uh, god bless you uh, everyone uh, have a blessed day uh, i'll meet you again in another class this week okay so yeah take care bye for now thank you ma'am Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Dinesh. Bye, Pratik. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Bye. 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 Subhachit. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank 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 you.
Uh, yes, uh, Felix, you have a question? Or was that accidental? I see your hand raised. Bye. Bye, Bula. Thank you.